Hello, this is Chris Pinot with GameAcademyOnline.com. Uh, we opened a pack here uh, that's really lackluster. Um, there's a few options. Uh, I really, I'm not a huge fan of Infect. Um, I think Core probably would set me in that direction. Relic Ward is probably one of the best, but I'm just going to take Treasure Mage. I, have, I do like blue, and uh, guaranteed two for one, especially if you get it early in the draft. There weren't any other blue cards, so. <clears throat> okay, so first pick we took a treasure mage. Uh, now we have the choice uh, choices here between spread the sickness, the only relic warder, reading claw, and beast strider, and steel sabotage. Steel sabotage is actually really really good. But I think I'm just gonna take spread the sickness. Uh, solid removal spell kills anything. Uh, no reason to pass it. <clears throat> okay, third pick. Uh, well, it's not a really hard pick. There's there's uh, a couple of good cards. Like the Wellspring's decent, but uh, this is a uh, Snapping Drake. You know, snapping Drake's always been good. So uh, we're gonna take a three-two flyer. We do need to keep in mind that we are we passed two Rhinos, so um, we should be able to get those guys back. <clears throat> okay, now we have the choice between a second Treasure Mage and a uh, Vivisection. I think Vivisection is amazing. Um, a huge fan of the card, especially if you can get it early, but it does tend to go a little bit later. Um, and doesn't tend to make people play blue. People just splash it or, or not take it if they're not blue. So, um, I do want to take the second treasure mage here and then hopefully table some of those rhinos in the next book. Okay, well, that's uh, humorously enough, there's a target for our <laughs> treasure mages. But uh doesn't seem like you're gonna get the twelve mana very often. Um, the other choices are Mortal Fondo, which uh, I like a lot, or moving into another color for another card. Uh, if this wasn't a draft video I would probably just take White Steel Colossus because it's sort of like three or four tickets, but uh here I'm just gonna take the uh, Mortal Fondo. <clears throat> There's a second uh, Snapping Drake, so we're going to go ahead and take him, Searing Raker. Uh, that fits right into what we're trying to do here. This is why I love, I love having to play blue in this set, because uh, my deck pretty much always ends up with a whole bunch of flying creatures and trooper ones. And, uh, most decks have trouble beating either a bunch of trooper ones or flying creatures. But, Either they don't have enough defense in the air, or um, they're playing like a red black deck, which means they're trying to race you and they have trouble beating like a 2 2 that trades with their 2 2 and then gets you another 4 4 to block. So um, I don't really like Vendal Kin Infuser, but I'm just going to probably take him here because I don't really see anything else I, I'm interested in. Okay, well, Relic Ward is quite good, and he's still in the back. So then maybe a similar white. White is open. Um, I'm not going to play any of these other cards in the back. I could hate the uh, Fight to Strike or Fist to Strike, but I don't think I need to go hate drafting yet. Uh, plus, if I was going to hate draft, uh, I, I'm assuming that I will end up with some, some expensive artifacts. Okay. Now, obviously, the pick here is between Rhino and Golem. Uh, I two treasure mages. Every time I draft this deck, I always make the, take the golem first and wish I'd taken the rhino because there's always another golem. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, I think there's another rhino going around and I don't think there's another golem. And I think uh, I have zero actual zero artifacts right now. So even though Draw Strip is definitely the best card, um, obviously I need, a, I need a guy to get as much treasure mages. And there's a hexplay golem. So again, Every time I tell myself I should take the Rhino and take the Hexplay Golem, I always get another Hexplay Golem. So, it stands true that uh, I make the wrong pick again. Ah, oh, there's the Rhino. Okay, I feel better now. Another good good thing to note right now is that we have not seen a Divine Offering, which is very good, considering we're playing a 2-7 drop and a 6 drop artifact. That, that card tends to be really, really hard to race. 
um, when, you're, when you have frozen ranges. So. Overall, pack one, not overwhelmingly awesome, but uh, definitely set up with some card advantage, a couple of flyers. Um, one solid removal spell. And a lot of openness. I mean, if we open a good rare, we could really go any direction right now. But instead, we opened another completely lackluster pack um, <laughs> that uh, really doesn't, doesn't give us anything. Um, I mean, we do have the Vendalkin Infuser. Taking a Thrumming Bird here might allow us to, to, to make some mediocre cards better. Uh, make, you know. Uh, there's also the, always the option of taking a, taking a, your first poison guy, a plague stinger, but I just don't necessarily feel like plague stinger is gonna is gonna get us there. I mean, we do have a spread to save this, but um, stoic rebuttal is fine, um, but I really think that we're gonna want to take Roman Bird here and just give ourselves an option of making some mediocre cards better. Uh, I don't want. I really just, I'm not excited about anything in this bag, so. Okay. Now we have zero targets for Trinket Mage. Um, Replica pretty much secures us into black. We do have a Relic Warrior, so we can take your Revoke Existence. Um, if we take Revoke Existence, it kind of throws away a spread the sickness and a mortal plunder for a relic warden or revoke, which kind of basically breaks us even anyway. Um, Mordok Replic is quite good with Morbid Plunder. Um, Trigon of Thought's not terrible either, especially considering we have that Thrumming Bird now. But I really think we're just going to want Trinket Mage here. Maybe I'm a, too big of a fan of the mages, but I, I just. I'm a huge fan of two for ones, and I, I, I have zero doubt in my mind that we'll be able to get at least a, a Silvok Life Staff or, or a Spell Mom. Um, and I just don't want to add low drop artifact creatures like Moria Replica to the, to the. If I'm going to take a two for one, I'd rather have a two for one that I can block with the turn that comes into play. <laughs> this draft is interesting because it's it's not like we're passing good cards. We're just not seeing any good cards. Um, the best card we've passed I think is a Plague Stinger. And there's we've seen zero infect features the entire draft for the most part. So um Vendalkin Surtar's unplayable. We have zero we have for the most part zero artifact creatures. Um, I mean I think I'm just gonna take an off color mirror. I'm just deciding which Mirror is the best for splashing, and we do already have a double white card, but it's probably not going to be splashed. I'm going to take the, the, the copper mirror because um, Silvok Replica uh, is, is a card that, that I wouldn't mind having in the stack, and it's a good splash card, so I'm going to take the copper mirror. Okay, now, now, wait, now we need to move into white. I mean, there's Clearly no good cards in the back for, for a blue-black deck, and Hippogriff's amazing. We don't have hardly any artifacts to use with it, but even if we, even if we don't get anything, this being a 3-3 uh, a flyer, even, is just important, it's just as important to us. So it makes me wish I would have taken the gold mirror last pack, but I'm going to take this Hippogriff, and if we sit on that guy, it's definitely going to gain us a lot of life from one of these guys hit the end. Okay, Glint Hawk Idol. That was not a very difficult pick. And there's something for us to get with our Trinket Mage, so we're going to take the Blood Spell Bomb. And there's another thing for us to get with Trinket Mage. Um, I do like Elmas Warden a lot, especially in this deck, because we're, we're, we're going to hit the air. I mean, we do have three three power flyers, which. and, and tons of ground. ground Stall with treasure and trinket mages and, and spire gold and uh, spire serpent. Spire serpent, for the most part, is is very unlikely to make this deck because he's never ever 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 going to be able to attack. I 
actually think Boxed on Wayfair. I've become a huge fan of this guy recently. I, I played him in my 3-0 deck at, uh, at the Grand Prix, and um, he just, there's a great target for a Trinket Mage. Table to spell bomb. Yeah, there's no white drafters. The only, the only white drafter at the table must be immediately to our right, and he's probably not very happy that we just took all these white cards from him, but to be perfectly honest, I don't care. So, uh, this guy's uh, awful in our deck. Just, I mean, not going to ever happen. So, uh, we'll take the Abuna Acolyte. Sam Idea is not terrible. I, I don't know why he gets such a bad rap in this set. Uh, he ends up in everybody's sideboard, but he's actually really good against Infect, so I don't know why um, he's so bad. People think he's so bad. But... And then we table to revoke existence, which is a little crazy, but makes us glad we made the jump into white when we did. And it's not unreasonable for us to play spread the sickness either, but. You know, especially if we get, if we manage to pull a uh, a green spell bomb, because we can trick him age for the green spell bomb. So essentially, play one swamp gives us three sources of uh, of black mana, which will allow us to play it. So uh, it is noteworthy that we don't have a single target for this drum Um And I'm also gonna gonna unhide this relic water too that we have hidden. Ultra Distraction actually got very a lot better too with the living equipment because uh, it just kills the living equipment. They kills the germ token and allows you to keep attacking. Also, they, they just cost so much to equip that like the difference is, is huge. Okay, well, uh, since seeing as how we have two treasure mages, it's a pretty big game to open a contagion engine. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's go ahead and slam that one. Uh, not much for a blue-white deck here, but and I am never ever sad, no matter what pick it is, even first pick, to take the Narag Replica. I just think it does so many things for a deck. Um, being a creature that can return with Hippogriff, uh, it lets us bounce our treasure and trinket mages. It's, um, you know, it, it just does a lot of good, really great things. Okay. Well, we have some interesting options here. We can take a Chrome Steed, which is going to be stinky. A uh, Snap Sail Glider, which is probably going to be stinky. A Liquid Metal Coating, which allows us to use our Revoke Existence and our Relic Order on anything. It's really still a little bit lackluster. Um, I do really like Liquid Metal Coating when you get Steel Sabotages, though. I've had a couple of those. It's really good with that because it allows you to one mana instant speed bounce, whatever you want. I'm gonna take a second copper mirror, open myself up to maybe splashing a green card if I open it. I mean, the market is this mean, it's not a terrible pick here either for us. But our deck's quite expensive. And I think uh, this allows us to splash a green card if we want. So if we see a uh, silver up or something. No. Well, or. A horizon spell bomb, I guess. We'll take that. Uh, there's a Skyro School, which I'm very excited about. So it's interesting. The horizon spell bomb, uh, by staying open the way we did, allowed us to uh, um, Probably get value off that because we took the two copper mirrors, which I'm always a huge fan of. I think copper mirror is the best off color mirror um, because it's so rock replica, which you'll always, pretty much always play anyway. Um, if you have the opportunity to get value off it, so it's not terrible just being a one three artifact creature and then having the ability to uh, to draw off Horizon Spell Bomb, which makes like essentially any splash color better. Um, I think I'm going to take a uh, black player here for the spread the uh, It's definitely noteworthy that, um, now, <laughs> it's funny because we actually had zero artifacts coming out of the first pack, but if you look now, we're actually, we have a lot of low drop artifacts, 
Um, which makes Little Bridge Lake quite good. And uh, Horizon Spellbomb. So this is just so interesting. I mean, this is this is a great draft to have on video um, because we're essentially a blue-white deck that is able to play splash the spread the sickness and able to use Horizon Spell Bombs off two copper mirrors and it just gives us there's so much card advantage in this deck. Um, really, really light on removal. We have Revoke Distance, Relic Order, Spread the Sickness, the Cajun Engine. But and then we Drake for removal on Dark Publica. So we're not that bad on removal. But uh just just this is the kind of deck I like to draft. Um, it's very controlling off the card advantage. Lots of defense. Uh, ways to win the game. Uh, we have tons of ways to win the game. Uh, uh, lots of flyers. I mean, you can probably cut this time right now because he's never going to ever make the deck. Uh, so this is 29, essentially 30 cards because Relic Warders hasn't made an advance in here yet. Um, Arbor is rare. I don't think I'm ever going to play Borden in second. Lots of memory fair, so. We won't play a 2 mana 2 2 for no reason. Especially considering uh, it's really good against. Uh, it's good against us, though, if we want to search our library with this. Uh, just in case somebody got a Zuri, I guess we'll take top of him. So we're not going to play that kind of thing. We'll play it. I, I don't know that we need to play, we're probably not going to play both x ray goings either, we're probably going to play one. But we do have the Rhino and the uh, Contagion Engine for the Treasure Mages. So. It's interesting. I think that, uh, you know, if 10 people did this draft, I don't think any of them would have a deck that looks like this. And uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, I think the deck's actually very good. Uh, I may be wrong about that. Been, been wrong before, but uh, it, it just it seems to be able to take over the ground, win in the air. I have one, I have four, three power flyers, and uh, three, two power flyers, which is pretty. Uh, so if you just take our our armada here, so to speak, put our flying creatures into the deck, and uh, removal spells, we're essentially just on the surface, just a blue white deck. Okay. So if you just look, these are basically this is basically our our blue white couple couple of artifacts and we have a bunch of flyers. But then you can fill out this three drop slot that's lacking with three card advantage cards. Um, put in a nice little bond rare that we pretty much get to cast every game that we hit. Uh, six mana. So that's that's being able to almost guaranteed cast Contagion Engine on turn six every game is obviously a huge game for any deck. Gonna play Glen Hawk Idol. Um, play the Copper Muse and the Horizon Spell Bombs. Now, um, it, it's definitely noteworthy to say this deck right now is very wants a lot of land. But it also is playing a ton of mana sources. You have three Copper Mirror, two Horizon Spell Bomb. So we're definitely going to play the Origin Spell Bomb and the two replicas. And the Spread the Sickness. Okay. Now. I like having a flight spell bomb in this deck just because it can send Rhino to the air or send Hexblade going to the air to finish somebody off um, if we get Trinket Mage. But I don't know that we're going to have a room for it if we're going to try to play Spread the Sickness. Um, let's color sword for a second. Okay. So. We're not overwhelmingly heavy in white, but we do have three double white guys. We are definitely relying on, on blue, though. 
Um, and this answer is not, I don't think, extremely necessary in this deck. Um, it just makes, uh, it does allow me to squeak one of these big guys through, but let's be perfectly honest, if I'm that late in the game and I've cast Contagion Engine, I'm probably okay. Um, Contagion Engine would be another reason to play the Thrumming Bird, but uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you need to Thrumming Bird them if you cast Contagion Engine. So, um, you know, 16 lands is, is a little bit, 16 lands isn't that bad considering it would give us 21 mana sources, but uh, I, I think we're going to lose to not drawing land as opposed to drawing too many. Um, if you look at how many cards, if we, if we draw a, uh, a copper mirror, we have, these are all three of these are two for one. The three, the three mages are all two for one. Moriak Replica is two for one. Uh, the Razor Hippie Gift is two for one. And the Contagion Engine is ten for one. So, um, the most surface level cut I see here is Moriak Replica. I don't think, I don't think we just necessarily need it. Um, I think it's going to be a three minute two two a lot of the time. I think we had enough card advantage anyway. So Okay, it's suggesting nine blue, seven white, one black. But I think I just I almost just want to eight eight this. Getting double white off seven sources of white is a little bit shady. Yeah, I think I'm just going to 8 8. And then hopefully I'll be able to just use a horizon spell on to get whichever of those colors I need. Uh, I'm excited about this deck. So, 17 lands uh, plus the 3 mirrors is 20, plus the 2 bright well, spells, basically 22 lands, 22 mana sources. Um, but then when you incorporate the fact that we have a bunch of guys that get us other guys and, and Hippogriff and Skyro School and um, our deck is very good at uh, not flooding out, so to speak. So plus it allows us to just pretty much make sure we cast Contagion Engine every game. So I'm gonna submit the deck and uh, I'll come back to you for round one. Thanks.